This episode of Boss Rush Video Game Book Club is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn more about Boss Rush Media's family of podcasts, head on over to bossrushmedia.com or patreon.com slash bossrushmedia. Thanks for your continued support. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Boss Rush Video Game Book Club. I'm your host, Corey Derrigan. Alongside me, as always, is the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. Hello. I'm here to talk about a mildly spoopy game. Maybe more... I don't know. Mildly spoopy. Anyway. Is it, hi. Is it more, is it more Alan Wake 2? <laughs> Alan Wake 2, I would say, is definitely more spoopy. Oh, definitely uh, more spoopy. Nothing scares you faster than a big, fat, naked man running after you. Yeah, previews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for next month's book club if you <laughs> want to hear about big, fat, spoopy men. Very Naked progressive. Men. Showing off a penis in the first five minutes of the video game. And not an attractive penis either. Like this yeah. is a uh, this is a middle aged, balding, fat man with a tiny schlong in a big old bush. Yeah, th- this is this is real life, guys. Mm-hmm. This isn't a fantasy. It's a, he's, he's a grower, not a shower. Uh, also with us is none other than PK Power Pat Klein. I'm not going to lie. The character model was me. I'm sorry. Oh, now boy. you guys know I'm in Alan Wake 2. <gasps> oh, man. Wow. What a twist wow. of fate. Wow. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you guys are enjoying that game. Um Sorry, buddy. Pat will be hosting that one. I will not be on that one. Yeah, Corey but chickened out. <laughs> I didn't chicken out. I hated the first game. <laughs> well, does it mean the second game stinks? Hmm. 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 Anyway, we're not talking about Alan Wake 2 today. No, we're not. We are here, everybody, to talk about Oxenfree 2. Oh, yeah. from, <laughs> from Night School Studios and Netflix Games. Uh, it's available on Switch, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 and PC. Uh, no Xbox version, which uh, caused a huge uproar in the Xbox community. Uh, really considering so. the first one is on Game Pass. Uh, uh, okay. But that's because Netflix's subscription service is game passes competitor i was so. gonna say a direct competitor so i mean <laughs> is it is it though i mean it's not but it, by definition going. yeah i mean it could be in the next four to five years though i mean they they have two Will AAA, it though? <laughs> they have two tr- big triple a uh games in the works and uh i mean joe staten uh who created halo and f- came back to uh 343 to finish halo infinite uh was just hired as their studio head so uh, and that's a pretty big name to get. Considering all Netflix's decisions, I cannot imagine their video game streaming services going to last very long. I bet it lasts longer than uh, Stadia. That is Rest true. Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's also weird, though, because they're going to like let... I mean, I guess it's not that weird, but they're going to let everything stay multi-platform, though. Except for Xbox, apparently. Uh, so, yeah, so... Oxenfree 2 is a supernatural mystery horror uh, graphic adventure. Uh, It uh, takes place a couple years after the first one. Uh, Yeah. So speaking of the first one, I think that's kind of the interesting history. mm -hmm. Uh, It definitely is one of the kind of indie, if you wanted to find indie games, that was, I don't know, pretty popular back when it released. So Oxenfree, Mm -hmm. the first one, released on January 14th in 2016. Mm -hmm. So it's been many, many a year since the highly anticipated sequel came out. Um, I don't have, you know, 100% of the information on it, but... Um, so the second, the sequel called Lost Signals or Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals was originally announced in 2021. So let's see. That's still five years. Okay. Maybe. Um, and they planned to release it in 2021, but there were, uh, I think up to two delays. Um, uh, they said that the devs said they want the experience to be the best it could be. I think part mm-hmm. of it just had to do with the transition to Netflix, 
Uh, yeah. So I don't know when I saw that Oxenfree 2's Lost Signals was going to be released, I got excited just based off of my experience with the first game. And I liked the first mm-hmm. game because it was creepy but not scary. I liked the choices your character can make that can affect the outcome. And it was a d- decent story. My major gripe was the slow-moving character. And we'll yeah, discuss. That, <laughs> yeah, that was my big complaint too. Uh, although I actually really liked the first one. Um more than I really expected. And I actually like towards the end came to really, really like the first one. Mm. And uh, it, it really made me not want to play the second one or like it really, I don't want to say not play the second one, but it retrospectively made me like not want to play the second one because uh, (laughs) it ruins the ending of the first one, like totally ruins the ending of the first one for me. Uh, I mean, no, no, Man, I don't know. Should we spoil the first one? I know Pat this hasn't is played spoiler it. Spoiler cast, and I don't really plan on playing the first but one. Pat, oh, okay. So, just quick yeah. history for everyone. So, Pat, you have not played the first Oxen Free, right? No, then, I jumped straight into the sequel like a crazy person. Well, this is this will provide great perspective based on how Corey and I think about it. Corey played Oxen Free right before Oxen Free Two, and back I played back. the first Oxen Free a couple years ago on the Switch. So, I say, spoil it up. All right. So we're going to spoil Oxenfree 1, and then we'll give our spoiler-free uh, take on Oxenfree 2, and then we will let you know when we're heading into uh, spoiler territory for 2 in case you haven't played it. If you're you know, watching this, uh, you should go play it before you listen to this. Uh, you have been warned. So Oxenfree 1, for me, I, I really enjoyed the kind of like after like it almost felt like an after high school, pre-college kind of group of kids going to the island to like spend one last summer there. Right. And like Alex was a really interesting character. Um, And uh, I kind of just really enjoyed their kind of all of their kind of banter back and forth. And uh, you know, you had Jonas, which was her uh, stepbrother, Brand new stepbrother. So yes, yeah. brand new stepbrother. And uh, oh, that is going into that kind of relationship, huh? Yeah. Well, there's yeah. actually room for a different kind of relationship. I forget, and maybe you have the name uh, up, uh, Corey, but there's also a friend that could be a potential love interest. Yeah. There's there's Ren. Ren, yep. And then there's Clarissa, who was a bitch. Ugh, yeah. And then uh, who was the... Th- uh, it started with an N. The... the not mm. I have all their names written down except for hers. Oh my gosh. I liked uh, her. Uh well say now. Characters and Oxen Free One. There we go. Race. Let's see who gets all uh, along. I read a completely uh it is name. Nona. Nona. Okay. Oh, I like Nona. Yeah. Uh I kind I think I went like a totally kind of uh, I, I I wonder how much you're supposed to switch characters during your gameplay, but I I kept J- uh, Jonas with me the whole time just because I wanted to mm-hmm. see their, you know, relationship kind of come together and see if anything, mm-hmm. you know, if they would like hate each other, if they grew to like kind of care for each other and help each other out. And uh, we're yep. to see if Alex gets stuck in a dryer and needs help. Oh, God. This is an after dark pat. <laughs> uh, Sorry, but I I really liked it. And like once you finish, you know, once you kind of finish the game and you go into like at the ending when you kind of go down into that pit and kind of do like the the kind of surge thing, and then your screen goes back black, and then you are on the boat again, kind of heading home. It seems like it was really kind of cool but then like at the very last second there's like an inception style ending to it and i thought like oh maybe they got sucked in or maybe this is just kind of like some residual stuff you don't really know because it doesn't really tell you and i really like that about the ending well yeah sucked in so just to explain just Mm -hmm. super 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 quick is Mm -hmm. there are these frequencies that that occur on this island it's been researched by i think a maggie adler or something and it's Mm -hmm. basically like a portal to another 
dimension that, you know, we're using uh, uh, frequencies to communicate. And it turns out it's by this group called the Sunken. Um, I think it's SS Klonoa or something. Did I say it right? Or am I saying another yeah. video game name? No, um, right. So it's those people that are trying to reclaim their lost lives, so to speak. So every once in a while, when you dial into these signals, you're like forced into a loop. So throughout the game, you experience that. So that's why at the end, you get that little bit of like fuzzy warped vision. It's like, oh, wait, are we in a loop? Mm -hmm. So that's that's what uh, Corey means by like the inception like ending. So, yeah, it was yeah. very good. Okay. Yeah, the ending the ending was really good. And I really like how Alex was kind of like, I don't know. I felt like she was kind of like finding herself on this journey, uh, especially especially with her encounters with Jonas. Uh, I really liked a lot of the puzzles and stuff in this game. Uh, I mean, they're kind of light puzzles, but, you know, the radio mechanic was really interesting. And, uh, you know, every, every once in a while you get like the red eyes, like just peering at you during like a cutscene, or, you know, the characters would go into their kind of uh, the frequency kind of the yeah. what do you call it the takeover the possession possession you'd say yeah. and uh i really i just i really thought the first one was a fun little five hour experience and then you know the, like i said the second one kind of ruins that ending and we'll get into that in a little bit but stephanie how did you feel about the first one i really loved it and uh, that's why when i saw the very first announcement for oxen free two that's what got me super excited and pestered you guys as uh, oxen free two being a potential book club um i just think that the again minus the slow moving characters i just like that choosing the dialogue um i did notice that there are different enough like endings so to speak like when you end the game like you could leave clarissa behind um mm. you can did you I did. <laughs> oh, I I didn't. I I saved her. You saved her. I couldn't uh, just. I look. She's a, she's a bitch, but I couldn't just let her stay. <laughs> uh, goody two shoes. I know. Um, and yeah, like you said, Alex is just a very likable character. I don't know if I would say as much as Riley that we'll talk about, but I came out of the original Oxen Free very positive. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I also thought like Ren reminds me of like a friend that I used to have like probably like 10 years ago and uh, I totally understood his character like he, you either like are like that person or you don't like people like that <laughs> and uh, I totally like got that character and it, it kind of enhanced the kind of like his and, and Alex's relationship as friends. Um uh, mm -hmm. And it was totally relatable to me from like a long time ago. I love how it's described in Wikipedia. Alex is accompanied by Ren, her stoner friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, you know. Hey, you know, stoner friends. Oh, uh, let's see. Those. Fun facts. This game was nominated for multiple awards, including Best Narrative at the Game Awards 2016 and Outstanding Achievement in Story at the 20th Annual Dice Awards. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to listen to us, you can listen to that. Yeah, but listen to us because we're cooler. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should kind of walk into spoiler free territory for the second one. Um, yeah, we can Pat, talk about just overall. Sorry, go ahead. Main no, game mechanics. No, you, can, you go. You go. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying like to so in order to do like spoiler free, we could just generally talk about game mechanics, how it's similar to the first mm -hmm. game, um, and then just high-level characters and what we thought about it. Pat, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll start with you. What was my opinions of the game? Uh, the game started out a little bit slow, but once you finally um, plant that first transmitter, and that's when things start like kicking off. Mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely was very interesting. I, I do like how the dialogue like flows very naturally and that by not making a choice, you made a choice. So mm -hmm. you, you literally have to, you have three dialogue options and a fourth, no dialogue option, but the conversation is going to continue whether or not you respond by one of those three prompts or just not at all. Um, 
I do have to question why, like, two out of the three answers kind of makes Riley into a bitch. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I don't know. It not, that I guess that's just kind of her personality in the game. Um, but the characters, uh, the characters did grow on me uh, after a while. I think I liked the radio characters more than I liked the ones that were on the screen uh, most of the time. Uh, I do like the radio puzzles, uh, turning to the frequency and you know ha- trying to create anomalies using the radio signals. Um, the radio itself, I can't say I really listened to too much of the radio shows or what was going on. I tuned in occasionally to the uh, school channel because you have a NPC that you can talk to and. That channel kind of goes back and forth between her little story. Uh, But I will say, out of all the characters, my favorite was definitely Nick the Fisherman. His (laughs) his story was his story was awesome. Yeah, Um, agree. Yeah, Uh, I like the time travel mechanics. I wish there was more of that in this game. Um, But I like how they were used. And um and it, it enabled to like move forward in some of those levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, overall, though, yeah, the story was enjoyable. Um, and you know, I'm I'm glad I had the opportunity to play it. Stuff. Thanks for the recommendation. Oh, thank you. That means I'm... you didn't hate it as much as Corey. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I think I didn't hate it. I think Pat had the advantage though of uh, not yeah. playing the first one. You know, I I wonder how much my opinion would have changed if I played two only or two or one or two before one or something. That's you know, totally fair. Um, I mean, I'll say in the Inception ending does sound pretty awesome, but you know, and I I can see why you like it ruined that ending for you. But at the same time, like I feel like the developers maybe wanted to try and like give those characters a happy ending. Yeah, I mean, that that's fair. And I I really enjoyed seeing like, you know, Alex at the end of the game and like, you know, her kind of helping you. Spoilers. Gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, well. Uh, but, you know, I, I just I don't know. I I almost wish this was like its separate story. And like maybe they mentioned the kids in passing or something, you know, or I don't know. I just uh I I don't know the way they tied it together like made sense, but I didn't care for it, I guess. Um, I also like. I almost wish it took place on the same island instead of, you know, a a different uh, part of Edwards Island, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I let me see. Let me get to my. Oh, uh, the uh, one of the other kind of big complaints is that like Riley is really boring. (laughs) She's just like not a great character. And uh, Jacob was I I didn't care for that. You couldn't choose who you wanted to be with you because it was just Riley and Jacob. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know like I I know there are people on the phone and you encounter, you know, the the other people on the island later. But like Jacob's really all you got. And I get that they're like working together and like that's kind of the thing. But, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well, you know, since you mentioned Riley, so Oxenfree 2 is follows a gir- uh, young woman. No, girl. Oh, no, woman. Oh, She's woman. like in her 30s, woman. right? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Like, but it's not, yeah, it's not like teens like the first She's, game. It's she, like at least late mm-hmm. 20s. Yeah, so it's, you know, I think I read somewhere that it's almost like an, a coming of age but for like, like, I don't know, like probably us millennials or whatever. So in one way, I wish I could relate in, in that sense. And there are going to be themes about, you know, parenthood and childhood that help. But I do agree about Riley. Um, she, she just seemed like a character that's just so over everything, which I don't know if that's her attempts to be cool or blasé, but she really I mean, is just we find out about her, but we find out about her almost at the very end about what yeah. her mm-hmm. internal struggle. And that's like right at the finale when it's like, oh, let's quickly dive into her past. So 
when you get to the ending, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a l- if a little bit of that uh, introduced earlier could go a long way. Same thing with the the indication of the characters in the first game because i spent a lot at least the first half of the game being like what the hell what is it where what what what, how does this tie to the first game and i know uh it eventually does at the end but it also seemed very sudden i wish like you know this this phenomenon happened i wish uh, maybe people in the town granted most of it happened in the middle of the night so maybe all the town's people were in bed but there's just like almost no reference or recollection at least unless i missed something guys right like i just felt like there's no mention of alex and crew in the beginning no not the no. beginning there is like a mention of it like i would say about halfway through the game depending on your choices right where they mention like a bunch of kids encountered this on you know, the other yeah, island, yeah. but yeah. you know, at that point you don't really know that they're talking about Alex and Ren, right? They just said exactly. people encountered it, which you, in the first game, right? You, you learn that it was like, you know, Maggie Adler and, and Anna, right. Are the kind of like the two like spirits that you kind of are trying to help right at that point. But, uh, you know, it, it could have been referring to that or like, you know, something else that happened over there because they in the first game, they do mention that this has happened before and, you know, maybe even a couple times. And uh, you could even be talking about the the younger, you know, cr- crew on the on the ship that sank. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, I I guess you could have picked it up that way, too, but I didn't take it that way because I wasn't I didn't know that you know, the kids from the first game are going to be involved at all, you know? Right. So yeah, Riley arrives uh, in her hometown on the Camina coast. This takes place five years after the first game. And she's just picked up a job uh, to study radio anomalies. Um, Pretty interesting job. Um, The, her boss is Evelyn. She's a relatively pleasant person that you speak to uh, over the radio. Um, she is assigned that coworker Jacob uh, to start erecting radio transmitters along the coast. I believe and Jacob. Don't forget why she got chose Jacob. Can you? Because Jacob me? had a truck. Mm. Well, yeah, and now, <laughs> yep, and then the truck broke down, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think they chose me mostly because I had a truck. Yeah, that that's correct. <laughs> I um, say what you will about Jacob's character, but I think the voice acting for Jacob was pretty well done because he came off as a very awkward, mm-hmm. sheltered, mm-hmm. lived in a small town <laughs> personality. Yeah. yeah, I definitely liked Jacob a lot more than Riley in this. Um, he definitely felt more like a realistic person, <laughs> you know, instead of like a 30 year old depressed. Yeah, he, he showed his insecurities outwardly. Yeah. Like if, if, the conversation wasn't going his way or no one was responding. He's the one that continues to talk and, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, it's both a little weird, but at the same time, that's, that's his character. How did you guys respond to him? Because man, you could either be a real B or you'd be, I I was always kind Mm -hmm. to him. Yeah, I was too. Yeah. Same. If, if, he's not if the character that you're interacting with is trying to be nice to you i usually try to respond in a nice way but like you know the other people on the island that you encounter that are kind of dicks i was kind of a dick back (laughs) yeah i i did because i did use a walkthrough on this one because i wanted to get the most out of the conversations and stuff by being a dick you that allowed you to use jacob for the ending Mm -hmm. if you wanted to use him yeah. See. Otherwise, he would refuse his option. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Did you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll get into it when we get into spoilers. It was about Jacob, but I don't want to spoil anything else because I've already kind of spoiled some of it. But whoops. Mm-hmm. Uh, but should we get into spoilers? Should we start getting into some major spoilers for this? Yeah, I think so because we've kind of set up the basic premise, right? Or what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you set up a transmitter, and all of a sudden you rip a hole through space time. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, and that's when all heck breaks loose. You encounter several like time loops or hallucinations. Usually, Jacob is like c- 
kind of possessed. <laughs> and then you also have to deal with these really obnoxious teenagers. There's um, Olivia, Charlie, and Violet. I think Olivia is kind of the ringleader. Uh, and they, I believe their mm -hmm. families are uh, connected to a cult. You know, well, mm -hmm. we've got sort of a cult in small communities uh, yeah. called Parentage. Yeah. But later we kind of learn that, learn that she kind of has ulterior motives by using whatever the the cult kind of uses to, you know, worship and change things. She like wants to f do something else with it. Like later in the story, you really find out and it's actually kind of sad, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, and you want to like help her, but you don't know what the right answer is for that towards the end. Yeah, they, they also try to set up parentage as kind of maybe the antagonists in the game. Like, maybe they're the ones that are trying to rip space-time. And you find out later, no, they, it's, it's just a group of people that are really obsessed with Star Watching. That they have nothing to do with any of the anomalies that are going on. Yeah, it's a nice uh, little red herring. I mean, I'm pretty sure some people could probably figure it out in the beginning, but it, it's still nice. I, one of my favorite parts of the game was exploring the church because there was like a lot going on uh, in that area. A lot of stuff to read, uh, a lot of interactions. Things got a little bit tense there. Um, it's those little bundled, like, bundled up scenarios in, in the game that I enjoy. It's the walking to and from that can be a bit painful. I understand that's for the dialogue and it's for the story. Uh, I think Corey mentioned usually the dialogue's pretty seamless. But gosh darn it, I wish there was a run button or something because I just felt like the time in between dragged a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i actually kind of shocked that like they didn't add a run button or something because like none of the buttons really do anything except for like move and choose your speech stuff right i mean and the radio dialing yeah. into the radio yeah yeah man the radio mechanic in these games are so good though i really enjoyed that mechanic well and speaking of like radio again like that's where you know for example nick the fisherman comes into play like as the story progresses if you check in with him uh, enough, you get little bits of progression. I think he's out there kind of taking a look at what's going on and he kind of might get sucked up into the chaos as well. I almost, I, I missed one and I was very upset. I missed one entry with Nick. Yeah, he's, he's out on the sea and he's noticed that the sea has been acting very strange, particularly it's too still in the beginning. Oh, right. Still like glass. Mm-hmm. And that it felt sharp, but it's, you know, it's, the ocean is not supposed to be that way. And eventually it gets tied into uh, storms uh, and waves, and he finally sees a portal. And you have the option to, you know, tell him how they open or, you know, tell him to just kind of get away from it. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't really... I did a few of the Nick things, but I didn't. I was more trying to mainline it because I wasn't sure when we were going <laughs> to record this episode. So I wanted to make sure I got it done. Uh, mm -hmm. But I really did like interacting with a lot of the people on the um, on the radio and trying to do some of the things for them, like the uh, the island kind of like park ranger um, mm -hmm. character and like telling her to either stay put or, you know, go out. And like, you always had that. There's a point where they kind of hint at, like, if you tell her to leave that she'll die. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. you know, I try to keep her safe. And then, you know, the, the dog, Jacob's dog also, I was like, we got to find the dog. And I thought we would just run into it on the Island at some point, but then it like shows up, you know, right at the very end conveniently. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, would you guys choose with the park ranger? Because I almost wanted to. Yeah, I think it reverse psychology me because I'm like, she definitely won't die. Go investigate, and that was the wrong the decision. Game, when a disembodied voice tells you to keep her safe by not keeping her inside, you kind of want to listen to that disembodied voice. I don't know. Not all disembodied voices have the best interests in mind, but clearly I was wrong. 
So you I, killed the park ranger. I oh. accidentally killed the park ranger. Rip wow. park ranger. I I kept her safe. I kept her safe. Hmm. Now I did tell Nick how to open up the portal, and he uh, he did go through on the other side. Aww. But he was happy about it. Like he opened it, and he's like, "Wow, this this is like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen." And he he seemed Nick seemed like the kind of guy who was lonely. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he had people that would miss him. I feel right. Like he's he's not leaving anything in particular behind. Yeah. So like he was one that was craving that adventure, and you kind of got that through his messages that you know this was what he loved. So it's like, this is how you open up the portal, you know, go and have yourself one, one last great adventure. You know, that's what I found really touching about that kind of his side story. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so where should we go next? We do know that Jacob did know um, Maggie Adler at some point, which kind of ties it back to the plot of the first game. Um, right. She studied the anomalies on Edward Island. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, by speaking about her, they kind of use that information to, to make a plan and go to like, I think it's three right points yeah. on Kamina, like the highest points and mm-hmm. put up three radio transmitters. And they, by doing that, they're hoping to cancel out the radio anomaly and close that big triangle in the sky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was kind of like an interesting kind of story beat to be not to put up the transmitters because that's kind of the whole, you know, the whole game <laughs> at this point. Uh, but I really thought it was interesting that they, you know, once he revealed that he knew her and that like he knew what she was kind of doing and they decided to, you know, kind of come up with a plan to do something similar was interesting. Um, I, I did think that was that was good. Uh and then, you know, while they're setting up the transmitters, I think after the second one is when, you know, well, you kind of encounter one of the kids. Yeah. Uh, each think, each transmitter kind of had its own, like, kid encounter. Right, because yes. Violet was on the bridge, right? Yep. And then mm-hmm. Charlie was, like, when you had to open that locked gate, but yep. he, like, got through it. I, did he Did he unlock it or... You know, uh, the gate was unlocked. He got through it. And right, he locked and then he it. Locked, locked it. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Olivia is when you go to the the house after the th- second transmitter. Yeah. 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 Where, how did you treat the first two? I, I was kind and saved Violet, and I was mm-hmm. kind to Charlie as well. And I, it, I, I think I yeah. thought that helped me in the confrontation later. Mm-hmm. I think it did. Like yeah. by helping them they were less likely to help Olivia when it came to through that point. And actually in a sense, stop Olivia from, you know, reaching the radio at certain times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at, at that point, I, uh, I also, I also saved Violet and was nice to Charlie. And when I got to the house, actually, like they were like, Olivia, you don't know what you're doing. You should stop. Mm-hmm. They both were. And then, uh, I can't remember yeah, they if they were. ran away or not, but like the house, like the one of the kind of transmission signal things, like turn the house sideways and you're trying to run up the house sideways, which was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I actually really liked that part of, of the. Of Wasn't the that game. the church part? Yep, that's the church. Yeah. The community yeah. center. Community, oh, well, no, yeah, right? community center, yeah. whatever. Sorry. I said house, so I was mm-hmm. wrong. Uh, yeah, that was a really excellent sequence. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was cool. But yeah, by helping them, like Violet stepped in the way, like, and from uh, Olivia stepped in Olivia's path so that you can actually get around a lot quicker and try and get the radio transmitter before Olivia does. So mm-hmm. it it does help you. Yeah, especially if you're an achievement hunter and want to get the achievement for stopping Olivia from opening up the uh, the portal. Yeah. And uh, this is also the point where, like, Olivia is being possessed by, uh, you know, what we find out later to be Alex, uh, you know, and, and, you know, when you first kind of see that, like, I mean, everybody gets possessed in this game at one point or another, right? Uh, but uh, not Riley. No, wait. Right. Riley, Riley there was at a, the very end. Yeah, there was. I mean, there was a couple points where, like, you, you know, the time 
traveling thing or the time yeah. kind of revert back to like, oh, I'm going up this mountain. Oh, I'm back here. We did this already kind of thing. Uh, but yeah. And then where where are we at next? We Olivia gets possessed uh, by Alex and uh, she uh, Alex kind of reveals that her and her friends were trapped uh, by the original rift they opened when they visited uh, the island uh, in the first game. And this is kind of where like you start. I well, at least I started putting two to two together like, oh, did they not make it like? And then that's kind of where like my brain just the rest of the time I was playing. I was like, man, did they really do this and kind of <laughs> take the mystery out of the first game? Uh, but. Uh, let's see the portal. What were you going to say some Stephanie? No, no. Keep going. Oh, uh, the portal. Uh, appears to have closed uh, once the transmitters were activated because after after you go to the community center, you kind of set the third uh, transmitter and it looks like it's it's closed. Uh, and uh, where I'm I lost. Okay, through uh, possessing uh, Alex possessed Jacob and uh, tells Riley that the portal had been partially open for some time and entities uh, she refers to as the sunken. Uh, which was which was the crew from the lost uh, submarine that you kind of they kind of touch on it in the first game, but the SS uh, Kalanoa Klonoa, however you pronounce it, yeah, they were a very uh, creepy crew. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and at this point, like before we move on, like the the you see like way more of the shadowy figures with the red eyes in this game than you do in the first one. Like, there's a whole segment like when you go through the um, when you go through the house and you start doing like the, um, like the radio signals and the chalkboard, like you have to do the, pu- like the get the hangman puzzle, mm-hmm. um, was really cool. And, but like they, like they were not only like present, but they were like all around, uh, you know, in the first one you saw like maybe one at a time, or like you would see the eyes up in the sky kind of watching over you, but never more than like two at a time. I think in this game they were like three to five on screen uh, a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah, at the end there happened. was at least five or six. Yeah, and yeah, visually uh, it was very creepy. I loved it. Yeah, uh, it's definitely really creepy. Uh, so after they set the uh, set the transmitters, they. Uh, well, they ultimately story. need to they yeah. need to go to Edward Island, right? Because yeah, yeah they uh, Alex alerts them to let them know that the sunken is still manipulating Olivia. Right. And that Olivia went to Edward Island to, you know, reopen the rift. Yeah. Oh, that's why I was like, oh, those pesky teenagers always freaking causing trouble. I'm yeah. telling you. Mm-hmm. Dick but, Harden's tower. Yeah, the, the other kids though they they were done. They they didn't want anything else to do with it. It it was primarily because of something that Olivia needed done. Yeah, yeah. And so they, you know, at this point, you kind of go to like the town center or whatever, and like you can finally kind of and, and correct me if I'm missing anything in between. You know, the that last part. I guess you go to oh, Jacob's they, house at one point. Yeah, you uh, did go to Jacob's this. house originally to get the. Uh, I think it was to get a new the radios. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then later on, at one point, you had to go and break into the shop to get the uh, get the transmitters that because the shop was closed and that's where they were, right. and mm-hmm. that's where the anomalies were like taking place and like flipping back and forth through time, and we kind of met Olivia also breaking into the the shop and setting on fire at some, you know, point in time that was different. Yeah. Uh, and then also throughout each mission, you kind of learned a little bit about Riley. Uh, it started off mm. with Riley and her dad. Um, why yes. Riley was a really good hiker is because her dad uh, took her around splunking in the caves um, mm-hmm. when Riley couldn't go on like a vacation yeah. or a school trip. Yeah. Um, and then we find out about, like, every time Riley set up a transmitter, she would then 
get sent to some it seemed like another dimension where she meets this boy named Rex. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you start learning that, or Rex starts kind of referring to Riley as his mother, mm-hmm. but it also is like a very tense and not exactly what you think a good par- parental child relationship should be. Like, there's definitely some strain mm-hmm. there. And like strain that like she's afraid that's going to happen. Right. And like, I, yeah. and maybe in that timeline where, you know, Rex is kind of an adult, right. Where he, they, maybe that relationship happened in that timeline. Right. And it wasn't but, the best relationship. Yeah. And maybe this is kind of like her learning moment of like, maybe I need to focus more on being a good parent to this child because you do find out that she's pregnant during this game, which we didn't really touch on. Um, yeah, see, you get really freaky dreams when you're pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> or possessions. I, I mean, I don't know why I said yeah, like I knew that, <laughs> knew that but you know. Uh, and so that was that was pretty that was a pretty interesting scene, um, and you could actually kind of like feel that kind of her growing concern that she's going to be a bad parent, and mm-hmm. so. I think that scene actually influenced my decision on the ending, uh, which we'll get to uh, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, once but it definitely uh, by learning that it helps when you get to the main finale and mm-hmm. uh, when Riley gets possessed, she has to go like through the depths of her mind. Yes. And um, kind of see the the events that molded her into what how she is currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so as you make the boat trip over to Edwards Island, did you guys take Jacob or did you leave him behind? I took, I him. took him. Oh, I left him behind. <gasps> no oh, way. What yeah. happened? Well, I was, I was kind of like, so I was kind of using a guide and I read ahead uh, and like, I cheater. didn't know, I didn't know, like, so in the guide I was reading, it said, if you take Jacob, he sacrifices himself so you guys can get out. And so I'm like, I want no Jacob, to li- I want Jacob to live because Olivia is a bitch. And, <laughs> um, and I was so say, I was like, lived, I mean, but I, no, I found out later that like you could make the decision. Or like a to set, know, to have him be sacrificed. Yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the way the way the guy out read it said that he would sacrifice himself, but uh, mm, I see. Uh, there's a choice later. So interesting. Uh, I left him there with his dog because that's right after you find the dog. But the boat ride, the boat ride over. What? So you took Jacob with you. What happened on the boat ride over? Jeez. Like, was there a conversation between you and Jacob? Or yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jacob and you have a conversation. Um, Interesting. I kind of forget what it was about. Yeah, I'll be just, honest with you. I, <laughs> well, I just kind of like what what's going to happen when everything's all said and done. Like, because mm-hmm. there, there's a possibility that they weren't going to come back alive, and yeah, you know, That's... then then they do the whole spitting over the uh, the side of the boat for luck. Oh right, mm-hmm. I remember that part. Both of them do. Well, no, he does it, and you have the option to follow suit. Interesting. So it's it's like friendship building. On yeah. The boat. Yeah. So if you leave Jacob behind, an apparition of Alex actually rides over with you, mm. and you finish the game with Alex, and trying to convince Olivia one way or another whether she should do this or not, and then. Uh, the decisions I made, I got sucked into the portal with Olivia and Alex and like, you could see that apparitions of the friends kind of floating around it, around the, this triangle, I guess the entrance to the portal, but you're now on the other side. Uh, they're not actually the friends, but they're just like the, the black silhouettes with the red eyes kind of floating Mm -hmm. around. And, uh, you know, you kind of have that conversation with Olivia and, she wants to be in there like th- this is where you kind of find out why she wanted to do this in the first place. And it's because her parents were killed and the or they're you, Yeah. And they're kind of on the other side. 
and she wanted to be with them because that's the only thing that makes her happy is being with them. Oh. And so I left her in there. I Well, a big part of that just till we get there is and that's the whole kind of connection of the sunken were the ones that were trying to manipulate Olivia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, were we kind of more at Alex on our side? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the portal needed to be closed so that the sunken would not invade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it needed to be closed on the other side. Mm-hmm. Right. Isn't that Which always is why the case? someone had to be behind? Yeah. Uh, another question I have for you guys, since you chose to take Jacob, did you go through some of the scenes of the first game at all? I don't recall. Uh, I can't say. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, so I took Alex, and like when you when you go through the portal, you start on the beach from the first game. And they're, it's like the whole opening scene from the first game when they're on the beach. And she's like talking oh. you through, like Alex is participating in the conversation, but she's also talking to you and l- telling the, you like. Yeah, that that did happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, that, that yeah. was, um, <clears throat> that was touching. I really did like that. Um, I, I, I went with Olivia uh, because she really wanted to and. I figured Riley needed to grow the F up and stay. And then Jacob also just needed to just grow up and enjoy his life. <laughs> yeah, I, f- I feel like the ending heavily hinted that Olivia needed to be the one to yeah. go on the other side. Like uh-huh. everyone else, like Riley's, if she went on to the other side, it would have been to it, the thing about being on the other side is the other side's a time loop. Mm-hmm. It it it's basically yes, it's gonna be your happiest memory, uh, but nothing's ever gonna progress beyond that point. Yeah. So that that's why Olivia wanted to do it, so she could just be with her family for eternity. And for Riley, it would have been she could spend time with Rex while Rex and her relationship is good, because according to Alex, who's seen all the times, the the their relationship's gonna sour. There's nothing that Riley's going to be able to do to keep Rex and her relationship from like falling apart. Yeah. Uh, and then Jacob, um, I'm not quite sure what Jacob's reward is, but Jacob will actually refuse if you tell him, if you tell him to go on the other side, if he has a good relationship with you, if you treat him like trash, he doesn't care. he be like, you know what? Fine, I'm going on to the other side because I've got nothing else. For sucks. Me. Yeah. 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 It's a, uh, it's a really interesting way that this game ends. Um, I mean, I so I left Jacob behind, and then once we got back from the other side, uh, Riley ended up sitting on the bench where the game starts, and her, her and Alex have this long conversation about, you know you know, her brother and Rex and, you know, a few other things, you know, and then you see all, all of the, all the uh, friends from the first game kind of walk through the town and Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of feels like they don't know what happened, but Alex does. And that didn't, that kind of didn't make sense to me. Like hint, hint, wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But at the same time, I was like, uh, whatever i i i don't know how <laughs> i don't know how else to end it i didn't want to have a conversation with all five kids right mm-hmm. um, what would have been cool is if they read your save from the first game just for the ending and if clarissa oh, yeah. was there or not <laughs> it would have been funny <laughs> oh clarissa's not here she's dead <laughs> murdered <her. laughs> um so uh, that- I do think the final part, though, to the ending was a very nice touch. Um, the box? The box of things yeah. that you got, depending on your choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really fun. And the note from Alex was nice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I really I really enjoyed that part, actually. I thought it was really... Uh, it was a great ending to a bad ending, in my opinion, if that makes sense. Uh, just, I mean, again, I don't really like how this game spoiled the first game, but it's, 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 you know, preference, I guess. 
I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't think the ending was too bad in this one. Like, in in retrospect, yeah, Alex will probably end up like not not Alex. Uh, Riley probably is not going to have that good relationship with her son. But if I feel like Alex tried to reconcile that with the box that she, you know, that you find out went to Riley to explain. No, sorry, that went to Rex to explain just what kind of a person riley was and so that's why the box is like oh these are all the choices like you got this because you helped nick do this you got this because you saved shelly you Mm -hmm. got this because you know you told evelyn to go home Mm -hmm. rather than stay at work because her sister was missing Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i was deeply troubled sorry to backpedal a little bit um, where kind of Alex explained that your future with Rex just regardless is not going to end well. Like how, how disheartening is it? Um, especially, you know, Corey, you as a parent, like imagine if someone who is, I don't know, a time traveler or something, but like, Hey Corey, guess what? When your kids grow up, they're going to hate you no matter what you do. Like how shitty <laughs> is that feeling? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, not, not feeling great. Uh, so I I mean I know most teenagers are kind of going to be shitty anyway but just because that's the nature of a teenager most of them I guess I shouldn't put them all in a box but I'm going to anyway for the sake of this conversation. They all must go in the box. Also I got to wonder though like when you look at all possibilities can you even see the possibilities that happen after you change the original possibility? I don't like I think maybe, you would have to play it again. I mean the 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 thing is, like, yeah, Riley's and Rex are not going to get, like, have a good relationship, but maybe, kind of like in a whole Christmas Carol thing, like, these original apparitions and, like, seeing the relationship she's going to end up having with Rex and the fact that Alex can now intervene and give this box to Rex, maybe, yeah, it starts off to merch, to moralist, whatever mm-hmm. the word Tumultuous, is. Tumultuous, yeah. Yeah, and then becomes you know prepared later right. on. Right, because life. of the knowledge, could could that be that negative relationship be circumvented? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why. Like I kind of gotten that. I kind of overthought it. I'm like, no. Now that we know, Riley's gonna work hard, and she's gonna make it work with him. Yeah. Well, this is also the first timeline that Alex can't see, right? Because she's here. So yeah. maybe that changes something too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I would I would like to think that her being back changes everything uh, for them, at least. Right. Until we uh, play Oxen Free 3 and, you know, find out what really happened. You mean Oxen 3? <laughs> ah, Oxen 3, I get don't it. Don't do that, Night School. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think this is a this is, you know, a duology is good. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. know if there's much room left for an Oxen Free 3. Well, what if there's a way to save the crew, but without them being possessive assholes? I was going to say, they already try to be murdering and taking over people. They can stay where they are. Or maybe Action Free 3 inv- is the crew. <gasps> yeah, time. I was kind of thinking that, or like playing as Maggie Adler also mm, could be like an interesting prequel. kind of yeah. prequel. Because uh, there's a lot of information in this game that this game just wants you to kind of like know the facts and not the backstory a little bit you know i mean i mean you learn about maggie adler in the first one a little bit but not i i almost feel like it wasn't enough to like i don't know it would be interesting to play as her through an adventure her and you know Anne or whatever yeah there's definitely a lot of backstory in those letters that you can find around yes yeah if uh um... too much well, see, if the characters weren't so slow moving and it just took so long to tra- traverse that tiny map, I wouldn't wouldn't mind doubling back on some of those collectibles. But there are times where I'm like, no, I cannot go all the way back to the other side to pick right. up this one shiny thing. No, sorry. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. I appreciate the thought. I do feel like for a smaller game like this, it definitely has well thought out lore. Uh, definitely feels like a like I don't know like a Pacific Northwest type of feel you know very creepy very eerie but uh, too slow Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah 
Uh, well, any final thoughts on this? Uh, you know, this game, I, and if I was to score this game, I would, I would, I know I kind of complain about the ending a lot and, you know, the first game, but I would actually give this game probably like a 7.5. Mm-hmm. I'd put it in the seven range too. It's, I'm, and, you know, as much as we like to think these days that anything that's not a 10 or nine mm-hmm. is garbage, seven actually means good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think I would hover between like high sevens, like seven point eight or something, or at min- at highest an eight. Um, probably just because of my-, my love for the first game. Um, there are a lot of I de- I just love the mechanics of, of the radio. I think the mechanics really do well. I do like the the choices, but uh, I don't know the the length between the first game and this, and the way it handled the first game wasn't really my ideal way that it was handled. Um, like All I right. said, it was slow going. I can't keep saying that enough. Like it just really. I wouldn't say bri- broke the immersion, but I was just kind of like, all right, let's go, you know, let's keep going to the point where in any other game, I might've been willing to do all the extra side stuff, but I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. They needed more like that rate. I love the radio mechanic. I just wish there was more to yeah. the radio mechanic and the time travel. Yeah. yeah. I do kind of like how they built off of the radio mechanic from the first game, though, because there is there are some slight improvements from the first game Because the first game. Like you just tuned in. Right. And then you found a more powerful radio to get more signals. And that was kind of it where this actually like you had to use it to solve puzzles and, uh, you know, a couple other things that were, you know, a little bit different. Not enough to like really care about or notice, but it was a slight difference from the first oh yeah game. Didn't, can't you use the radio signals to help like unlock locks or something mm-hmm. yeah. unlock locks unlock locks. um you use them to of course open up the uh the rips yep and um they weren't radio signals but then you also had those little computer mini games right uh where you had to change the waves into shapes oh mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that was which cool. uh <laughs> it's funny because we were just like we we're talking about this game but i'm you could do the same thing in Spider-Man because I just finished Sp- or Spider-Man Remastered's main campaign. Nice. And it kind of reminds me of like a better version of what you did in Oxenfree. Oh. Uh, but I would say overall, I still say the first is better of the two. So if you listener have played neither, at, at minimum play one. If you mm-hmm. can't play both, play one. Um, two is still worth it if you have the budget and you end up liking one. Um, I don't know about you, Corey, if your recommendation stands as it's you don't need to play it back to back. I definitely for sure don't think you need to play it back to back. Yeah, but. I just I just did it because I thought it would enhance my. Well, yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would. Yeah, I would. It's so hard because like. I have a I have a lot of if you don't care about the game's ending and you actually like the kind of stuff that we talked about, like how the first game is kind of introduced into the second game and how it kind of wraps it up i would play them both i still think one is better i honestly think it's probably just a preference thing at this point because they're both very similar games uh i think you have more variety of characters in the first one obviously uh and you know your relationships with each of the characters could change depending on who you take with you and the conversations you have i kind of again kind of felt a little uh, I guess cornered when in two because you can only have Jacob, which Jacob's a great character. Don't get me wrong, and you know some of the conversations are actually funny and kind of, uh, you know, kind of take you out of the scary elements of the game for a while uh, mm-hmm. with some of these conversations. Uh, but then again, you don't get multiple, you know, personalities to right. uh, encounter and and kind of deal with. So, uh. I I personally would say play one, definitely. Uh, two, I would say it's worth playing, but just be warned they really incorporate the first game into the second game in a in a personal opinion, a not a not great way. I was trying to think of a smarter word to say. Not ideal. I lost it. Yes, thank you. Not utilizing the first game to its maximum potential. Yeah, look, the English language is hard, okay? Oh, it's always hard. Uh, 
Nice. So, so Pat, would you? And I know you said seven is a good game, but generally, mm-hmm. would you say you recommend it for for most gamers? Like, what kind of gamers do you think would like it? What gamers do you think would not like this? Well, these are definitely. Uh, this is definitely for a set of gamers that like the sci-fi uh, mystery that uh, comes along with this one. Uh, it does like. It is a science adventure game. It it deals with theories of time relativity and if you're into that that's definitely something you should check out um it's also like for people who really like narratives um just just don't expect a whole lot of puzzling to to happen and um but overall i will say it told a good story so if you like good stories check it out but maybe go with the first one because apparently I don't have the first experience, but it sounds like the first experience was a better one. Yeah. Either way, I would say solid performance uh, by Night School Studio. Um, I don't know what they're up to now, but they made something in between too, I feel like. Let's see. They... Uh, Oxford After Party was the After other game Party. that they made. Oh, yeah. After Party. Is that the, the kids that tried game. to, like, yeah, I was going to say try to outdrink Satan or something? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I heard that one's a fun game. It's, I play, I played like the first hour of it. It, um, the dialogue was pretty funny, but I didn't really, I didn't really, it didn't click with me, I guess. So I kind of put it down, but. It's out there. It definitely has a light, lighter hearted tone than Oxen Free and Oxen Free 2. Oh, yeah. Well, look at that. Another game in our book club library. Yeah. Uh, there you go. There's there's now there's now 10 book clubs out for patrons. In and I think four. a lot of our, our well, recent... Only a quarter of them are Zelda. <laughs> Right, and and a lot of them are actually spoopy or in the spoopy realm, right? Well, yeah, I feel like we're hitting a we've hit a theme with the last two and the next one, <laughs> the whole like night in the woods. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I uh, so just to kind of tell everybody what's coming up, so Stephanie and Pat and other guests are doing Alan Wake two, and then. Pat and I and I'm I reached out to Grayson today, so Grayson Morales uh, mm. might join us. Um, Mary also said yeah. she'd be interested in that nice. one as well. Yeah, so. she might join us there too. So it might be a a good foursome, huh? Huh? A a for uh, what? I don't think you said the title of the for game. Spider Man Two. We're doing Spider Man yeah. Two and, and for December's Patreon. Uh, episode and then january have we confirmed january's no not yet okay i think at some point and it doesn't have to be january's game we should have um let our patrons do a vote if not for a specific game but for maybe like type should it be a recent release um mm-hmm. and just a, a throwback or an indie or triple you know what i'm saying like yeah i think it would be cool I will, I will put up a post when this episode goes up on patreon um, and then depending on, you know, how many votes we get, I will uh, also put a poll out on Twitter maybe a couple weeks later okay. just to see, you know, like right. mid-November. So we have enough time to do some games. Yeah, we'll <laughs> figure it out. And then when Pat and I discuss Alan Wake 2, we'll, we'll reveal what January will be. Yep. And I already know what game I want to do when, I, when it's my turn for book club. Well, it, you're definitely due. <laughs> what is it? Uh, I want to do the first Gears of War game. Ooh. Really bad. It's only it's. Oh. I mean, that campaign's only about six or seven hours long. But uh, I mean, if push comes to shove, that could be January. I, I mean, it could. But we also talked about another game that's kind of more interesting and relevant to that month. Uh, so For January. Yeah. Yeah. I'll remind you when we end the call. Okay. okay um well everybody thank you for joining us for this uh video game book club remember you get it one month early if you are a patron for just a dollar uh you can catch up 
Uh, we will throw some, you know, a couple free ones a year out there for everybody during the, you know, like we did uh, separate ways. Actually, that I actually think that's a cool way to revisit a game is like if there's any DLC that's kind of substantial to uh, do that as like the free one. Well, sounds yeah. like Alan Wake 2 is getting two of them. So really? <laughs> yep. OK, well, I mean, Tears of the Kingdom won't have DLC, so <laughs> Great. No offense to that game, but I really don't feel like going back to that game. I beat it. I kind of put it on the shelf and I'm like, I really enjoyed the game, but I'm like, I don't know if I can do everything that like the first one. I want to spend some winter time hours running around one more time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think um, the bulk of what I want to do, I've just kind of run out of steam. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Stephanie, Pat, thank you for your time as always uh, on these Happy fun gaming. video game book clubs. Uh, you can check out our website. You can follow us on social media. You can do all the things. Patreon for just a dollar. You get it, almost everything uh, early. Uh, you can be a Patreon producer at the $5 level. Uh, it really helps. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching and or listening. And until next Bye. time. We love you. Don't open any time riffs. Yeah. Maybe you're in one. <gasps> if you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support.